Hi guys. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of forgetting myself here, but I thought I would share with you a couple of my summer essentials. Now I've watched two videos on this and by the time this gets published, maybe there'll be more of you that have done it, content creators. But the two at the time of filming that I watched and I enjoyed, one was Marlene Fabin Glam. She did her summer essentials and I ate that all up. And another was Natalie the Beauty Diva. Both of these ladies are absolutely lovely and I watch all of their videos and after watching Natalie's and uh, I decided yeah I'm going to do this so I decided that I was going to do my summer essentials and try to sit out here in the backyard because one of the things that I enjoy tremendously when Jay and I are home is to sit out here under my back porch this is a very rough back porch it's just screens that in the winter we cover it with plastic it's just raw wood and right now the sun is coming in off of one side of the house so you're not seeing the full backyard but we love sitting out here we love listening to the birds and watching the wildlife we have rabbits jay calls them little peter cottontails running around and we have chipmunks galore and yeah we have those squirrels which i'm not happy about as you know but we get a ton of birds so cardinals we have some hummingbirds we have some blue jays we have some i don't know what they're called but we have a ton of birds so when we're not away camping this is definitely where I enjoy my morning coffee. I come out here really super early and I just sit here. If it's chilly, I bring my blanket. I sit in my chair and I just have it facing that way. And I just watch the birds go to town. Summer essentials, aside from sitting here and aside from camping and aside from skincare, the things that I have to either ramp up that in some cases I might use all year round, but that I super, super have to ramp up for summertime the first thing on my list is going to be sun care. And because I often talk about sunblock and I wear sunblock all year round, I thought I would mention that the Australian mineral, this is the mineral lotion non-greasy formula. It's a bit drying. And in the past I've said I usually have to make sure I'm well oiled. This is in my sun bag. This is in my car. This is everywhere. I have several tubes of this. It's just, it's slightly tinted. It doesn't turn orange on me, but it's a 50 SPF. I put this like all over my face in my neck. I will during the day if I'm out. Now, I'm not talking going to work. I have foundations that have 50 SPF. I have foundations that I use a lot, my Shiseido, my Color Science, I've talked about that. I'm, I've talked about them. I'm talking about if we are roughing it, we're in the camper, we're at the beach, or we're doing yard work. I mean, if I'm doing yard work, I'm not gonna be putting on a full face of makeup. I'm just gonna be sticking this on. But the thing that I think we neglect is our lips. So the sunblock for my skin my body my face is a no-brainer but the stuff for my lips i think is so important and i think people tend to forget it so i like this aquaphor this is a 30 spf it's clear i will put this on over my lipstick under my lipstick all day long i have several tubes of this in my sun bag when i say my sun bag my like beach bag i have a little bag that lives in the back of the car just in case along with my my beach chairs just in case so that i have them with i also have one in my pocketbook so i can touch up during the day i've been known to take this because it is clear and i just go right up my nose around my nose i put this in more places than just my lips when i'm at the beach when I'm on a long bike ride, when I'm out doing yard work. It would be different if I was indoor working, stuff like that. And I also have this Bliss Tex. I really like this. This, this is like a, a tropical. It's like a, a coconutty smell. And well, I just got lipstick all over it, but that's okay. It's only my lips. So, but this is only a 15 SPF. So for me, a summer essential is to stock up the beginning of the year and make sure I have whatever I can to protect my lips. And I always try to, I mean, sometimes you can have a tinted one if you want, but I try to go for clear because I always want to go above my lips, cover my whole smoker's wrinkle area. I mean, you, you know, you need that, right? You definitely need that. And then the other thing that one of my favorites is hats. 
So I'm not a big ball cap person, or at least I never used to be. However, I have in the last two years uh, really gotten to appreciate ball caps. I've learned how to wear them. I, I've learned, you know, thanks to both, I think it was Carol from the O'Carroll Show and Mary Glitzy Fritzy, who one day when Jay and I were camping and I had this, ball, I think it was this one, and I was saying, you know what, Mary always looks awesome in a cap. Carol looks awesome in a cap. They wear them all the time. And I was like, uh, you know. So both of them were texting me back and forth saying, you know, you got to pull the cap lower. So uh, they kind of taught me how to wear a ball cap. But I have some really cute ones. I don't know if you guys can see. This is like the, I should probably open it up so you can see the whole thing. It's like uh, two beach chairs embroidered. I really, I really love this. And I love the colors. And there's some like little shells and stuff here on the cap. And then I have the plain ones that I might be just potting around with. My Berkshire Hathaway, my work one. And then my favorite, my bling bling. <laughs> You've seen these on me. So my ball caps, I have more in the motorhome. Uh, the motorhome is still in the repair shop as of this filming. I don't know if I'm going to get it done in time to go to Bar Harbor this year. I'm hoping. I'm really, really hoping. But we won't know. I'm filming this Sunday. Uh, whatever Sunday, whatever today is, it's 27th or the 26th, but I'm filming this Sunday morning. And I have a whole bunch of straw hats. I have some really sexy straw hats. They're like this big floppy black one and uh, a bunch of other fl uh, straw hats, but they are in my camper. So I, I don't have them with me to show you. But this one, because I took this to Vegas with me when we went to Vegas along with those some of those ball caps, I had them in the house rather than stocked in the camper. So that would definitely be a huge, huge summer essential, whatever cap I want to have. And then along with protecting your lips comes protecting your eyes. I have a ton, a ton of glasses. I do wear prescription sunglasses. I have two pairs of very expensive prescription sunglasses that I wear, but I really only need them for reading. So if I was going to be reading at the beach, I would have them on. But if I was just going to be walking, and I've shown these cheapies before, if I was just going to be walking, I would just get these. Most of these glasses are between nine and 20 bucks. I don't spend a whole lot. Um, you know, I just don't. But, and I'm not going to show you them all. I have a ton of them. I really do. I have, Jay would ever kill me if he saw how many I have. I've got it. Yeah. I, and here I am. I love, 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 love trying my sunglasses on. So sunglasses are a huge, huge summer essential. I think the more sunglasses you wear, the big, that's why I was so happy because for a while, the, I used to always wear the big Jackie O style sunglasses and for a while they kind of went out of style and you had the little granny, you know, uh, John Lennon, little granny type sunglasses or whatever you call them. I don't know why I call them granny, but granny glasses, I guess. Those were all the vogue and I always hated those because I think the bigger your sunglasses are, and these are not big enough for me, but the bigger your sunglasses are, the more they will protect and and prevent you especially if you get you know uh, polarized or whatever prevent you from squinting which helps prevent your 11s from getting worse and also your your lines I wear sunglasses every single day going to work all all year long the other summer essential are my little hair clips now a lot of times I just put my hair up this has a little clip and I might just pull it up in a very weird little ponytail on the top of my head, sort of looking like that little girl. What is her name? Bambi? No. Pebbles. Pebbles, I think. Bambi was a deer. Is Bambi a deer? I don't know. But so I would just like clip this onto the top of my ponytail just to kind of give me some little bit more wispy hair than, you know, what I have. And then, of course, you've all seen this one with these longer trendles. I absolutely love them. And then I have this bag. These are the ones that I wear more often. If I want to have a whole lot of volume, I put this in and I'll put it on the back of my head with a claw clip. I have a smaller one. I have curlier ones if I want my hair to be curly. And here's another straighter one, but not as thick. They're all pretty well the same color theme, mostly buttered toast. 
Some of them I've gotten at Sally's, but most of them I've gotten at Ulta, and some of them I've got at wigs.com online. You go to wigs.com online, hairdo has a bunch of different hair clips that are really, really nice. I, I, I really like them. They have ponytails. I have two long ponytails too that when I wear my hat, my cap, I stick one out. And it just kind of like, yeah, I don't know, gives me an illusion of having more hair. So my hair pieces, my hair buns, my fake pieces, whatever they are, they are definitely for me a summer must have. The other thing for me on my essentials as you can see, I have my Apple EarPods in. And my Apple EarPods, I love these things. They come in this little white case. But quite a while ago, Julie, I think it was Julie Mimosa, had talked about some Amazon faves. And she had talked about this little pink. Well, it comes in different colors. You can charge and you can clip it on. It's sort of like a protective carrying case for your Apple earbuds. I love this. I love this. And I love my Apple earbuds because this is all part of my summer essential. This is awesome. It clips on to anything. The edge of my bathing suit, the edge of a pair of shorts, my chair, whatever. And inside it safely are my Apple earbuds. Now I listen to, and this is going to be my last favorite, uh, along with my earbuds, I am a podcast audiobook fanatic. I used to read a lot, um, but because I'm always going, I'm always driving, I just don't have the time to read as much, so I don't read as much anymore. So what I do is I listen to podcasts, and my favorite, absolute favorite podcasts are, I hate to say it, but true crime. And everyone always says to me, what are your favorite true crime podcasts? I'm going to list them below, but quickly at a glance, I will tell you I happen to love Crawl Space, Criminology, True Crime Garage is one that I listen to a lot. Missing Mara Murray, which is a girl that went missing in New Hampshire. So I watch, I listen to two podcasts on them. One is called Missing Mara Murray, and the other is The 107 Degrees. Both of them are on Mara Murray, but they also talk about other things. She's not yet been found. So it's a case that's ongoing. Once you get caught up and you're up to the most recent episodes, they periodically update every maybe two weeks or something of that nature. Or more if there's breaking news. And Crime Junkie. I think Crime Junkie, it's a woman. I can't remember her name. But Crime Junkie is a really cool podcast. I really like that one a lot. It's two women and they talk about crime. And they talk these cases. It's each episode or every two episodes, you know, they might do a two-parter or a three-parter. Talks about one crime case. And that's been pretty good. The other podcast I listen to are YouTube self-empowerment type podcasts. So... I love the Sunny Show, S-U-N-N-Y Show. She also has a fabulous YouTube channel. She's a marketing person, a marketing expert. She gives a lot of tips and tricks. And, you know, that said, just like when someone talks about Retin-A or anything they're using on their face or skincare, you have to take the advice that people talk about and really investigate. So a lot of these marketeers, you know, obviously sometimes they want to sell you something, but a lot of these marketeers, the, the ones that say, oh, grow your YouTube channel, you know, do this, do that. Sometimes they have some really good advice on creating content funnels, creating a plan. And then other times, some of them are like just full of baloney. So you really, you gotta, you gotta take it all with a grain of salt. However, I love The Sunny Show. I think she has a lot of good, she gives a lot of good input. Uh, she does sell. I think she has like courses and stuff like that. And most of them do. But you can listen to her podcast and watch her YouTube channel. And I think you, if you're into YouTube or growing a YouTube channel and all that, I just find it really valuable. And I love her podcast. She often interviews people on her podcast. The other podcast that I like to listen to for marketing and self-improvement I love the YouTube Power Hour. That's a tube buddy thing, and they come on, and they just give you, like, in an hour, they give you some what's happening in YouTube, what's going on. I also love to listen to YouTube Connect. That is our very, very own Stephanie Farrell Focus. She periodically comes out. She doesn't have a whole lot of episodes, and she's not, like, a weekly uh, podcaster. But she interviews people on her podcast. They're usually mature beauty or people from the YouTube community and she interviews them. So I think that's really fascinating. So I have her on my playlist 
and then video creators, Tim Schmoyer. I enjoy listening to Tim a lot, and so I'll often listen to his podcast. The other podcast I like is Video Purist. She, and of course her name is escaping me, but she started out years ago with a lot of GoPro videos and stuff like that, and she has really grown her career and morphed into more rounded YouTube as well as some Instagram. So I do like listening to her. Those are some of my podcasts that I listen to on a regular basis, and I would definitely say my Apple earbuds and my podcasts on my phone are just definitely a summer essential. I'm walking in the summer, maybe I'm even out at the beach walking, or I'm somewhere outside. I'm listening to an audio book, or I'm listening to a true crime podcast. I think this podcast that will just suit every need, every need, every need you want. And if you're into gossip, there's even some gossip things on YouTube podcasts. I was surprised. But, um, yeah, so there's a whole a bunch of different stuff here. If you haven't seen Marlene's video or Natalie's video, and I'm sure you have, but if you haven't, I'm going to link their specific videos on their Summer Essentials so you can check them out. But that's my Summer Essentials for what it's worth. I don't know. I hope you enjoyed listening to this and I hope you can understand a little bit of why I enjoy being out here on my back porch and watching nature and all that when we're home, when we're not camping. And keep your fingers crossed that we get our camper back in time to go to Baja. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye-bye.